Good morning, One Hope Church. How are you this morning? This is Derek. Um, I want to welcome you to One Hope Church Online. I'm hanging out in the lobby. I want to let you know we're going to have a three-minute countdown just in a moment. So run and grab your uh, Sunday morning uh, items, what, what you need to, to enjoy church this morning. Maybe it's a Bible, uh, some breakfast, and uh, something good to drink. As you get your devices ready, don't forget, we want you to like, share, subscribe this morning. And uh, here's a reminder to go ahead and check in. Um, go ahead and jump on your Facebook check-in and use the hashtag Bricks for Schools. I'll share more about that when we get into the announcements, and I'll see you when we get back. Good morning, friends. This is Derek, your heart and soul coordinator here at One Hope Church. I'm so excited for the announcements. I love that uh, we can do church together uh, through online. Um, hey, if you're a first-time guest, uh, we want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we still want to engage with you. We still want to connect, and we're going to ask you to do us a favor, and that's text HELLO to 863-777-5639. And uh, make sure to comment in our chat rooms this morning. Share something fun with me. Hey, what about this? Answer this question. What is your favorite board game? We have host ready to meet you and hear from you this morning. Hey, while we're at it, grab your cell phones. Or if you're using your cell phone to watch service, wait until afterwards. Uh, jump on Facebook and check in. You see here at One Hope, uh, we check in with a purpose. Each month, the church partners with an organization that gives back. And this month, our partner is Build On. Every 10 check-ins provide one brick to help build a school in a needed community. See, Build On has built schools across the globe. And by checking in, you can say you've helped build a school. How, how awesome is that? 
Use the hashtag Bricks for Schools when posting online. Hey, have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? You can watch previous online uh, services and children's services at any time. Make sure to like and follow us online and uh, on all social media platforms. We're asking you to share the message this morning uh, because we believe that a share is just as good as an invite to church during this season. Next on the, the dock is my favorite uh, thing here at One Hope is uh, Zoom Hope Groups. Are you signed up for a Hope Group? Have you joined yet? Uh, have you ever been part of one of our Zoom Hope Groups? It's never too late to join. But maybe you're thinking, Derek, hey, I, I might not know anyone. Look, that's the purpose. Join us, come meet, engage. We wanna meet you. We wanna hang out together. Uh, we got groups uh, spread across multiple nights and multiple times. So jump online, check them out, and contact a leader today about joining one of our Zoom Hope Groups. Lastly, I wanna share with you how you can worship through giving this morning. Uh, go online to onehopechurch.org slash give, and you can contribute there. Or you can text to give. Just text One Hope Church to 77977. Or you can mail your check to the church's address, which is below. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much, church, for your generosity uh, during this time. And uh, But maybe you're in a situation and you say, hey, Derek, um, you know, we need some assistance. We want you to reach out to care at onehopechurch.org. And we want to discuss those uh, that, that situation with you. Um, you know, we've set up a hope fund that has been uh, able to be an aid and a blessing during this season. Worship's beginning. Let's get in there. Let's sing loud. Let's praise loud. And let's uh, listen to the message and lean into God this morning. You love, you love 
This week, we are continuing our series on wisdom, and I came across the verse that I wanted to share with you. In Proverbs 2, verses 6 through 8, it says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. True wisdom comes from the Lord, and from him comes knowledge and understanding. In James, we are told that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach. I don't know about you, but I constantly need an extra measure of wisdom. Let's pray and ask God. Lord Jesus, we ask you as a people that just need wisdom. We need the wisdom that you and only you can provide. Lord, guide us uh, as we go about our days. Guide guide us uh, and open our eyes to see the truth that you have for us uh, in the message that's just coming up. Lord, I pray for wisdom for us as a people, as a church. But I also pray, Lord, for wisdom uh, for our nation, for our leaders. Uh, Lord, I pray for unity with them, uh, that they might have the wisdom of the Lord to be able to govern uh, our country and to make the decisions that need to be made, especially given the, the time and the circumstances that we live in right now. Lord, above all, I'm so thankful that the true king and the wisest uh, person, or wisest, uh, yeah, wisest person to ever walk this earth uh, is you, and that we can put our hope and our trust in you uh, and lean into the wisdom that you have for us. Lord, we honor you this morning. We love you, and we thank you. We pray these things in your holy name. Amen. We have always thought of wisdom as being so much more than a few clever sayings from the past. More than just a few good ideas to curb our folly. It's bigger than a life or a generation. It's perspective transcendent of time that permeates every dimension of our being. Its source is brilliant and radiant to be feared and embraced. Experience is its guardian, and humility its key. But it'll never be effective until you put it on. Well, good morning, and thanks for joining One Hope Church Online. My name is David, and I'm the pastor, and we're so honored that you've joined us today. And hey, if you're new to One Hope, Hey, we are a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, life-giving church that is on mission. We're on mission to share hope, to strengthen faith, and to serve our community. Well, hey, last week we kicked off a series for August that's called Wise Up. And uh, you know what? We're living in some crazy times. There's a lot of information and opinions out there on every subject imaginable. But if you're like me, you don't just need information or opinions. Man, we need wisdom. We need to wise up and we need God's wisdom in our lives to lead us and direct our steps. So in this series, we're diving into one of the Bible's wisdom books, and that is the book of Proverbs. And hey, can I challenge you to take the Proverbs Challenge, uh, that is reading a chapter from the book of Proverbs every day. You know, there are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, and most months have about 31 days. So, 
You know what? If you made it a habit to read a chapter a day, uh, I guarantee it's going to make a difference in your life. So today's August 9th, if you're watching on Sunday, and uh, you could start on chapter 9 today or whatever day it is, you start on that day and then just continue that pattern. You know, Proverbs was written by King Solomon, who was the son of King David, and uh, he was known to be the wisest man to have ever lived. And so the theme verse for this series comes from uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. And it says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, though it cost all you have, get understanding. Hey, I I would say that uh, Solomon is trying to communicate to us that wisdom is important. Hey, if it costs you all that you have, get wisdom. It's not just a knowledge. It's not just a head knowledge. It's it's not what you've just learned or uh, understand or think that you know But wisdom is actually skilled living. It's the ability to take what you are learning and apply it in a way that makes your life work. Well, last week we said that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Uh, That's not being afraid of God. That's not shaking in your boots. But to wise up, we got to recognize that God has some incredible attributes that can help guide our lives. We can know, uh, as as way of review from last week, we can know that God is awesome. God is holy. God is right. And when I can understand what it means to fear God, I can live a life that is fearless. I can live fearlessly. So in this series, we're sharing some principles from Proverbs to help us wise up. And today I want to talk about contentment in life. You know, uh, uh, Proverbs 19.23 says, the fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. Come on, how how would you like to live untouched by trouble? Uh, When you think about contentment in life, maybe your first thought goes to something like happiness or satisfaction, or maybe even uh, you might think complacency if you think in a negative term. But this verse points out to us that contentment is all about life. And that's not just about breathing air in and breathing air out. It's about that abundant life that Jesus promises us as believers. I mean, actually in John 10, verse 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. And and so that's what Jesus promised. And this is what this kind of contentment that Solomon is speaking about long before Jesus ever came. He's talking about this living a life that's abundantly content. When we're content, we can tap into the supernatural peace of God and the joy of God in our lives. How many of you want to be content? You know what? If you've ever been around someone who is content, they immediately will make an impact on your life. I mean, I think we all want to live that kind of life of contentment. And, and, and to let you know that if, if that's you today, if you say, Pastor David, that's me, I want to live content. I, I feel like I'm in discontent sometimes, but I want to live a life of contentment where I have the peace of God and the joy of God and the hope of the Lord in my life. Hey, can I tell you, me too, I'm a fellow struggler with you. You see, uh, we live in a culture that is not content. So if you want to live a content life, you're going to be counter to this culture. I heard a quote about our culture that really stuck with me. It said, never have we had more, but enjoyed less. I mean, it seems like so many people aren't happy where they are. They're only happy where they're not, or where they suspect they could be, right? Uh, We wish we had someone else's life, or someone else's opportunities, or someone else's possessions. Rather than being content, 
where God has placed us right now. You know, we got all kinds of technology. We live in probably the, the greatest technological age of all mankind. We have these things called smartphones. And it's said uh, that, that uh, your smartphone now, your iPhone, your Android, well, maybe your Android. No, I'm just joking. Your smartphone can replace about 50 items that we used to have to carry with us or have. I mean, you think about your phone. Camera camcorder, calculator. I mean, y'all remember having to carry around those big day planners, you know, with your big calendar uh, and a slew of other things with all the apps. I mean, there's even like an app now for like levels. So instead of, you know, toting this big level around, you just like lay your phone up there and it'll tell you if it's level. Guitar tuners. I mean, amplifying modelers for your guitar. I mean, it's just like amazing all the technology we have. And you know what, if you think about it in life, not just your phone, but I mean, we've got like video doorbells, we've got, uh, 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 we got uh, thermostats you can control with your other devices. We've got like the Alexa where you can say like, hey, say, you know, play this kind of music and all of a sudden you got it instantly. I mean, we've got smart TVs and Wi-Fi and man, one of my favorites, we got Netflix. Come on, somebody. I mean, we got so much technology, uh, but you can say, I mean, can you say that it's made you more content? Probably not. I mean, if you're like me and like most everybody I know, you always need more. You always got to have the upgrade. You always need the newer version, right? I mean, watch a, watch a Netflix movie like Maybe that classic movie on Disney, Beauty and the Beast. Come on. You love it until that little thing happens when you're watching Netflix. And sometimes you get that little wheel that starts spinning and it shows up. I call it the wheel of death. It gets like so frustrating. And all of a sudden it's like, man, I was just trying to watch a movie. Now I can't see it. I think I'm going to call up Spectrum and complain about my internet. I'm going to call up Netflix and cancel it because I can't even watch a movie. I mean, you get so upset. And Michelle's like, calm down. <laughs> but I mean, th think about it. I mean, some of y'all are not going to remember this, but if you think about it, what would have it taken to watch Disney's Beauty and the Beast Back in 1992, now that, that movie came out in 91, so like in 92 when they released it out to watch it on, uh, on video at home, you know, Michelle and I were just married and, uh, you know, if we decided we wanted to watch Beauty and the Beast at home, here's what we would have had to do. Number one, we would have decided to watch it during the business hours of a store. Because then we'd have to get in our car and drive maybe 10 or 20 minutes, however long it took to get to the video store. And come on, we know which was the video store we went to, right? Blockbusters. Uh, you go in and you ask that uh, incredibly knowledgeable teenage employee wearing a blue shirt, like, uh, hey, I'm looking for Beauty and the Beast. And they'd be like, uh, it's over there. And they just kind of point in the direction of every other movie in the store. And so, like, you're going down every row. You're searching through stuff. You're going by, go, oh, wrong row. Shouldn't be on that one, you know. And you go through, and, uh, and you finally find the box. Come on, somebody. You, you've been to Blockbuster. You find the box. That doesn't mean you found the movie. It means you found the box. And then you take that box up to that incredible employee of Mr. Blockbuster there, and you'd say, hey, um, I, I want to get uh, Beauty and the Beast here. And uh, then that employee says, hey, I don't care if you found the box. All of them are checked out this weekend. And so then you'd be like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? I guess I'll have to go to... Hollywood video, right? To find a copy there because nobody really liked to go to Hollywood video. So they usually kind of had, had what you needed. So it was kind of a good backup. But then, you know, you go home, you put that VHS because that was the format that you had to watch it on. You put it in that machine and you'd have to fast forward past the previews till you finally got to watch Beauty and the Beast. 
Beauty and the Beast, right? But, you know, hey, it's not over there because when you get to the end of the movie, what did you have to do? Be kind and rewind, right? Uh, Or like maybe, I don't know if the FBI was going to come up and arrest you or something. That's what they made it feel like. Uh, Then, you know, after you've rewound it, stuck it back in the box, you got to get back in your car, go back to the movie store, drop it off, or face those dreaded late penalties, right? Can I tell you, y'all young people complaining about having to pay extra on your Disney Plus subscription to see the Mulan premiere, y'all don't know nothing about what it was to have pain to go to the movie store so you could watch a movie at home. We had all this technology at our fingertips. Yes, so many of us are less satisfied than ever. I'm not even going to go back to like AOL dial-up where you're like waiting to get on the internet through your phone line. The question for us today is why aren't we happy where we are? Why aren't we happy with all that we've been given and all that we have available to us today? And why aren't we happy with who we're living with uh, in our lives? What's creating all of this discontent? The truth is there is an enemy of contentment that we're facing every single day. And I'm going to tell you what that enemy is. That enemy of contentment is comparison. Wouldn't you agree with me that we live in a culture of comparison? Solomon has something to say about that in Proverbs, Proverbs 14, 30. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. If anything can steal contentment, it's comparison. So let me share real quickly Uh, what happens when we live a life of comparison. Comparison, number one, makes life about the wrong perspective. Comparison tries to convince us that what we have just isn't good enough. You know, comparison has been around from the beginning of humanity, but I think, you know, in the life that we live right now and with social media, it has thrown gasoline on the fire and made comparison uh, something that is in our face every day. I'm sure when they created social media like Facebook and Instagram, it was designed to help build our social network and keep us connected to the lives of our friends and family. But sometimes it just makes you frustrated with everybody. I mean, Watching people on social media breeds all this comparison, which ends up being very toxic for our soul. I mean, you jump on social media maybe to like, hey, I'm going to get on and I'm going to celebrate somebody's birthday today and send them a nice little note or a meme, you know, to kind of brighten up their day. Then all of a sudden, you get that post from somebody and it's a friend's post about something new that they just got, or some place they visited, or, or, or some new relationship they're celebrating. And it makes you feel like, oh, well, I don't have something like that. Or I hadn't been anywhere like that. Or hey, I'm with the same person I've been in with a relationship forever. And you, you see their posts and they're like, picture, hey, smiling, look at my new boat. Or look at my new car. Or hey, check out my new house. Hashtag blessed. I mean, I'm not even going to go there, but maybe I will. I feel for the single people out there. Because, you know, back in the day, it was only your mama that was like, hey, when are you going to get married, right? Uh, Now open up social media and someone else is getting engaged or they're posting pictures of this fairy tale wedding that they're wanting to have and the photos look amazing but come on can we all be honest it's because they took like 20 hours to stage the shot then they uh, had somebody come in and photoshop out all the imperfections out of the picture 
But in the moment you're looking at it, you don't remember like, hey, this is staged. Somebody photoshopped this. I mean, you see it and it feels real. And it makes you feel like, hey, what's wrong with me? When am I ever going to get my fairy tale? When am I going to get my happy ending? If that's not bad enough, now the ads we have coming through social media, they're targeted at anything you've looked at on Amazon. Come on, at Christmas, it's hard to like search on Amazon because it's going to show up in Michelle's Facebook uh, feed that that I'm looking for something for, right? Uh, Or anything you've searched for on the internet, or if you got a smart device in your home, can I tell you, if you even say it out loud in your house, sometimes it shows up in an ad. Kind of scary. All of that creates a feeling, though, that, hey, maybe what I have or who I am is just not good enough. And if anything can steal commit, uh, contentment, it's comparison. Comparison makes life about the wrong perspective. And here's number two. It makes it about the wrong presumption. We begin to compare, and I'm going to tell you, here's the wicked part. We jump to the conclusion that if I had what I don't have, boy, I'd be happy. If I could just get, you know, that new fancy appliance in my kitchen, I'd be happy. You know, if I could get that gadget, if I could get that my pillow, I would sleep better. You know, I'd be happy if I could get what I don't have. And we're bombarded with this message in every commercial, every billboard, every ad. And the message is, hey, you're unhappy where you're at, but don't worry. Happiness is just one step away. It's just one click away. And it can be had with just three easy payments in 1995. Come on. Can I tell you, it's just a lie. No item, no pill, no workout, no person can bring you true satisfaction or contentment or happiness in your life. In fact, the truth is comparison is a moving target. I mean, oftentimes if you get what you wanted, you're usually no happier than you were. And sometimes you're more unhappy than you were in the first place because you thought you were going to be happy when you got that. There's a great quote I came across from actor Jim Carrey. He says, I think everyone should get rich and famous and do everything they dreamed of doing so that they can see that it's not the answer. I know some of you are like, hey, let me try that one out, right? <laughs> but no, I, it's not the answer. Comparison is this vicious cycle. I start comparing my life to others. I want what I don't have. I want what they have. And, and, and then I get what I want, and I find out I'm still not happy. So I start comparing again, and I'm back in the cycle. If anything can steal contentment, is comparison. And comparison makes life about the wrong perspective, the wrong presumption, and thirdly, the wrong person. See, we put so much attention on what others have and who they're with. But you know what? We'll miss out on what God has blessed us with, right? Hey, around 2013, there was a a new word that came into common use. And it's this word. It's, It's actually an acronym. It's FOMO. Come on, everybody heard of FOMO? Do you know what that word means? It's something we all face, no matter who you are, how old you are, or where you live at. FOMO, it's the fear of missing out. I just, I don't want to miss anything. It's this feeling that focuses on them or their, not us, and here. Come on, you know it, that, 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 that phone we were talking about a little bit earlier, every text, every after hours work email, every call that comes in can immediately transport us from where we are with who we're with to somewhere else and with someone else. If we took a hard look at, uh, at that, uh, we'd realize that maybe when we answer that call or 
respond to that text or or get engaged in in that 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 social media when we're with our families or maybe when we're out with other people we kind of miss what's in the present and i don't know about you but i want to wise up I want wisdom to grow in my life and develop me into the person that God wants me to be. I want to not live comparing my life to other people. I want to live in the present. I don't want to live like on social media wishing I had something somebody else had or I was with somebody else or I was in a different place. I want to live a life of contentment, not comparison. Because I believe there's a better way than comparison, and that is the contentment that God can bring with what he's placed in your life. Solomon, man, he had everything. He was wealthy. uh, He was wise. He tried it all. And this is what he says about contentment. We're going to look at Ecclesiastes, another book Solomon wrote in chapter 4, verse 6. It says, better is one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Come on, let me read that again. Better is one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Contentment. Don't you want to live the life that God has for you with his joy and with his peace and with the hope that he gives and with that contentment, that one handful, rather than always struggling and toiling and chasing after what's next or what somebody else has or who they're with or where they're at, that two handful kind of life, whatever else is out there. So how do we get a life full of contentment? that one handful kind of life. I think the best example is the Apostle Paul, and he kind of leads the pack in Scripture on living a life of contentment. And I want to read to you from the New Testament from Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. It says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Come on, somebody. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Come on, we've quoted that uh, verse 13 so many times. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And Paul says, hey, if you want to live a life of contentment, want to know the secret to that? You want to know the secret of living that one handful kind of life? It's by living through the strength of Christ. So I want to close this morning by sharing just a few of those secrets of contentment that Paul shares. And the first thing is this, we got to realize what we have. I mean, we could all probably make a list of things going on in our lives where we need a change or we need a break or maybe some of the real problems that we face in life, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, things happen and, and it seems like all things start coming against you at one time. It's like when the car breaks down and then the AC stops working at the house and then you realize that, man, the dryer's on its last legs. You got to run it three times to get the clothes dry and then you get the bill in the mail that you weren't expecting and then you're like, Lord, can it get any better than this? Because this looks pretty bad. I need your help. But I wonder if God would say to us today, I know all those things are happening. Hey, I know our world is filled with racism and and, and the coronavirus is running rampant and, and politics is crazy. I know all the things that are happening and there's real fears that you're going to through. But hey, can you pause for just a minute and recognize what you have? You're alive today. 
We're blessed. We live in one of the greatest nations in the world. We live in America. And on top of that, we, we're blessed, man. We live in central Florida. I mean, there may be limitations right now, but come on, somebody. We are a stone's throw away from Disney World, the happiest place on earth. We're not that far from Universal. Those things are just in our backyards. And on top of that, you could get in your car and you could be at the Atlantic Beach or on the Gulf Side Beach in a matter of just hour or an hour and a half. Come on, somebody. We're part of One Hope Church. We are blessed people. And it doesn't end there. The God of the universe, can I tell you, loved you so much. Number one, he created you in his image. He destined you with purpose. And he sent his son, Jesus. He gave him up to die on the cross so that you could have an experience of everlasting life and you could experience all the promises of God in you. He's given us hope and a future. I don't have everything I want, but I've been given way more than I deserve. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 and 17 says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Paul says, of whom I am the worst. But for the, that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And everybody says, amen. One of the ways that we can do this practically, realizing what we have is Maybe by making a list. You know, a lot of people make a bucket list. All the things they feel like they've missed out on, the things they want to do before they <clears throat> pass on from this life. My nephew Fisher was here the other week <clears throat> visiting, and they were just going to be here for a couple of days. And, of course, we're in a time where it's, it's not really time to be going out and doing a whole lot, when, especially in big crowds. But... He wanted to make sure we knew that, hey, his bucket list at seven years old, the top of his bucket list is that he wants to go to Legoland. Come on, he's got a, he's got a dream, right? He's got a thing he wants to do, something he feels like he's missed out on at seven years old. But you know what? Rather than making a list of what we've missed out on, maybe we need to make a list of all the blessings that God has given us. Because when dis discontentment kind of rears its ugly head, when you like been on social media too much and, and, and you just start going down uh, that pathway, you can break out that list, maybe break out that journal and start reading all the things that God has done for you. You can read all the promises that he's fulfilled, all the miracles that he's done in your life, all the things he's blessed you with. And rather than getting discontent, rather than wishing that you had something else, we could realize how God has blessed us and we could give him thanks and praise. Sharing just a couple of secrets of contentment from Paul, we got to realize what we have. And number two, we got to make God our source. See, at the end of the day, our discontentment is not about stuff. It's about this void in our life that we're trying to fill. And you know what? Many people, we try to fill our lives up with all sorts of things, all sorts of experiences. But can I tell you, outside of God, you'll never find contentment in some sort of superficial thing or relationship or experience. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will 
and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Come on, right where you're at, you need to say it, work it out. Come on, say it out loud. Work it out. We, we got to work it out, our salvation. It, it's like a, a gold mine. It's not just working it out like fixing a problem. Uh, it's like digging for gold. You, you might start on the surface and, 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 and you might like, hey, get some of the equipment and you're going to pan for gold dust in the creek bed. But you know what? If you really want to strike the mother load, if you want to go to where the main vein is and you're going to get a lot of gold dug out, you got to go deeper. You got to dig deeper. You can't just be shuffling around on the top surface. You got to go deeper. You got to dig a mine and you got to get in there and you got to start digging it out. And you may have to set up some things to help give you some space so that you can keep digging and keep working. And as you do, as you are working it out, God is bringing out some gold in your life. Can I tell you that making a declaration of faith in Jesus with prayer, man, that's just the surface. There is so much more. I know so many times as, as, as churches and pastors, we kind of bring you to that point of like, hey, let's pray this prayer and we're going to pray a prayer in just a few minutes for you. But I want to tell you, if you've already prayed that prayer, you need to go deeper in God. In fact, you need to start digging deeper. You got to work it out because the, the more you dig and the more deeper you go with God, the more you'll find of Him and the more He'll flood your life and your soul. See, everything you need and everything you lack is found in Christ. I need to say that one again. Everything you need and everything you lack is found in Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Come on, you want to be wealthy in this world? You want to have it all? You want, you, you want to know that you really got something? It's not in a new car. It's not in a new relationship. It's in having dug out the godliness of faith and, and having that spiritual contentment in your soul. That's what gives you great wealth. You want to dig it out? Here's how you do it. You get into God's word. You take time to pray. See, I believe God's word is full of promises that can take you through the most difficult of times. And you know what, when we pray, and right now we're in 21 days of prayer, and I encourage you to join us uh, all week long. We have different ones of our team leading in prayer. we got prayer focuses uh, being put out on social media. We're streaming a prayer service on our website every morning at 7 a.m. Uh, prayer is powerful and effective. And my prayer may not change my situation, but I'm going to tell you that when I pray, God will always change me. Hey, we're sharing just a few secrets of contentment from the Apostle Paul. He says we've got to realize what we have. We've got to make God our source. And here's the last thing. We need to live life on mission. You know, that's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. He lived his life on mission. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14 says, Hey, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on. Hey, somebody needs to hear that today. You need to press on. Hey, this is not time to stop. This is not time to give up. This is not time to take a water break. This is time for us to press on, to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, uh, through Jesus Christ or through Christ Jesus, is calling us.
Paul says, one thing I do. Not like, hey, if you follow these 27 steps. No, he says, one thing I do, I press on. I don't have time for comparison. I'm on mission. I don't have time to be derailed by what somebody else is doing or where they're going or what they bought or who they are with. I'm on a mission from God. I'm living for something that's bigger than anything this world has to offer me. And my contentment doesn't come from the things of this world. It comes from the purpose that God has for me and for me fulfilling that purpose that he's called me to fulfill. Are you struggling with contentment today? Maybe you find yourself battling comparison Do you need to wise up? Let me tell you that contentment fills me with life and fortifies me from circumstances. Contentment will fill my life and fortify me from my circumstances. Would you pray with me? God, we come to you today and we thank you for who you are and for all you do. Lord, I pray for those that are watching that may be struggling today with contentment. That life is just unsettled. And I pray for those that find themselves battling comparison right now. Lord, would you help us to wise up? Would you allow your word to be planted into our lives? Help us to realize what we have. Help us to make you our source and help us to live our lives on the mission that you've placed us on, fulfilling your purpose for our lives. God, we love you. We need you today. And I pray you'd be with us this this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, let me challenge you. Maybe you're feeling some discontentment. Maybe you haven't been able to fill that void you feel in your life. Maybe you tried to be content by, you know, getting things. Maybe another car, bigger house, or, you know, trying to jump in or, in or, in or out of a, a different relationship. But none of those things can really bring true contentment. And I want to tell you the reason why. It's because true contentment is centered in having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Outside of Him, you'll never find true uh, contentment. And maybe you're watching and you never surrendered your life to Christ. Maybe you're watching, you, you never like really said, God, here's my life. I've tried it. I'm I'm done. I can't, I can't do this. I need your help. I surrender and give myself to you. Hey, maybe you, you are watching and you, you, you have had a relationship with God, but somehow when you kind of take an inventory today, you find yourself in a place where, hey, you're not really where you should be with the Lord. And you're really unsure about your, your relationship with God because you realize you, you've walked away from Him. Can I tell you that today is your day? Hey, this is your moment. The Bible said it, it says that if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, He will rescue you and He'll give you salvation from your sin. He will fill that void that you've been trying to fill with everything else and He'll bring this contentment to your life like you've never known before. See, God wants to fill you up with hope and grace and strength and peace, and and he loves you so much, and he wants you to experience that love and grace and hope that he has for you. And so if that's you today, hey, I want to pray a prayer with you right now, and I want you to be bold. Will you pray this prayer right out loud with me, right where you're at? It doesn't matter who's around you. You can pray this prayer. Just pray it with me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me and come live inside of me. Make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. I give you my life. 
thank you for the hope that I have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love to hear from you. There's a couple things I'm going to ask you to do. You can make a comment right now on whatever platform you're watching on. I'm making a decision. And I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some people that are just going to cheer you on and just say, hey, congratulations on this decision you're making today. But I'd like you to take it one step further because I really would like to make a personal connection with you. I'd love to pray for you. And, and so the way you can do that is you can text the word HOPE to 863-777-5639. I just want to send you a couple of messages this week to encourage you in your decision that you're making to follow Jesus. And hey, if you want to reach out to me by email, no matter who you are, whether you just prayed that prayer or you have some other prayer need in your life, you can email me at prayer at onehopechurch.org. That message comes directly to me. And we keep all those uh, uh, prayer requests confidential. Hey, before we close with a blessing, I uh, want us to give thanks and worship the Lord together one more time. Come on, worship team is about to lead us. Let's bless the Lord together.
children and their children and their children when he passes go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing Hey, we always like to close our service with a blessing and you know what we just actually sang that blessing so if you want a little blessing you can put your hands out like this but if you want a big blessing you can stretch your arms out like this and hey may the Lord bless you and keep you may his face shine on you and show you his favor this week hey we love you God bless you grace and peace to your house is our prayer for you.